We're at 4.1c using unit rates. 4.1a and b are linked in the description. We're going to start with a real quick review. A ratio, that's when we compare the same type of units like miles to miles, it's distance to distance. A rate is when we compare different units like distance to time for miles and hours. And a unit rate is a rate that has a 1 as its denominator, 50 miles in 1 hour. We can use unit rates to simplify rates and ratios that appear complicated. When rates and ratios are given as compound fractions, unit rates can help us simplify them. If our rate is 1 fourth mile in 1 third hour, we can write 1 fourth over 1 third. That means 1 fourth divided by 1 third. So remember this fraction bar in the compound fraction means division. And this little fraction bar actually means division also, okay? We've got 1 fourth divided by 1 third. To divide fractions, we multiply by the reciprocal of the divisor. So we have 1 fourth times a 3 over 1. That gives us 3 fourths. So our unit rate is 3 fourths mile in 1 hour. So aside from dividing the fractions and solving it by multiplying by the reciprocal of the divisor, we can also multiply the numerator and denominator by the same factor that will make the denominator equal to 1. If we have 1 fourth over 1 third as our compound fraction, we think, well, we're trying to get a unit rate, so we need this to be a 1. And if we have 1 third, we need to multiply it by 3 to get a 1. We multiply the numerator of the compound fraction by the same thing, and 1 fourth times 3 is 3 fourths. So our unit rate is 3 fourths mile in 1 hour. So this works when the divisor is a unit fraction with 1 as its numerator. It doesn't work so well if there is not a 1 here. So if we have 3 eighths or 2 fifths or 9 sixteenths, it's better to use division. But when we have a unit fraction here, it's very easy to turn it into a 1. Sometimes the information in a rate problem will be presented in the wrong order for the question asked. We need to base the rate and the unit rate on the question that is asked. So here's an example. Sam drove a half hour and traveled 20 miles. Bob drove one fourth hour and traveled 12 miles. Who drove faster? Well, the clue word faster here tells us the answer involves time. And we need time to be the denominator of one for our unit rate, so we have one hour. It was presented with the time first and then the miles. We can rewrite it as Sam is 20 miles in one half hour and Bob is 12 miles in one third hour. And just flip it around to its correct order. For a compound fraction for Sam, we're going to have a 20 over half. That means 20 divided by half. We can rewrite it as 20 over 1 and we're going to multiply it by the reciprocal of 1 half as 2 over 1. We're going to get 40 miles over 1 hour. For Bob, we have a 12 over a 1 third. That's 12 divided by 1 third. We can rewrite it as a 12 over 1 multiplied by the reciprocal of this 1 third divisor as a 3 over 1. We flipped it around. Now we have 12 times 3 is 36. 1 times 1 is 1. We have 36 miles in 1 hour. And since 40 is greater than 36, well, Sam drove faster. He drove 40 miles in an hour. He drove 36 miles in an hour. Since both times involve a unit fraction, we can easily find who drove faster by multiplying. We know Sam is 20 miles in half hour. That's a unit fraction. And Bob is 12 miles in one third hour. That's a unit fraction. Remember, unit fractions have one for a numerator. We can just think, what does one half need to be one whole? We can multiply it by two. We multiply the numerator by the same number. We get 40 over one, or 40 miles per hour. And for Bob, 
we think, well, what does one third need to be one whole? It needs to be multiplied by three. Then we'll have three thirds. We multiply the 12 by three and we get 36 over one or 36 miles per hour. We multiply the divisor, that's this one, by a factor that will give us one as a product. Then we multiply the dividend, that's this number, by the same factor. We do the same thing for Sam's rate and Bob's rate, and we see that 40 is greater than 36, so Sam drove faster. When the denominator of the compound fraction is not a unit fraction, division is simpler. If it told us that Bob drove 12 miles in two-fifths hour, we can't quickly multiply this two-fifths by a whole number to make a product of one. So we do 12 divided by two-fifths as 12 divided by two-fifths, and we write it 12 over 1, and we multiply it by the reciprocal of two-fifths. We flip it around to five-halves, and we get 60 over 2, which simplifies to 30 miles in one hour. So do you see how this wasn't a unit fraction? So it was a lot easier to just use the division and multiply by the reciprocal. We have another word problem. Two water tanks are leaking. Tank A has leaked 1 16th of a gallon in 1 12th minute. And tank B has leaked 3 eighths of a gallon in 1 30th of a minute. Which tank is leaking faster? So for tank A, our rate is 1 16th gallon in 1 12th minute. For tank B, our rate is 3 eightths gallon in 1 30th minute. We can write our compound fraction as 1 16th over 1 12th. We can use multiplication because that's a unit fraction, isn't it? In order for this 1 12th to be one whole, we just need to multiply it by 12 to have 12 twelfths. We're going to multiply the 1 16th by 12. That's going to give us 12 16ths over 1. And we can simplify the 12 16ths to a 3 fourths. That means tank A's rate is 3 fourths gallon in one minute. For tank B's rate, we write 3 80ths over 1 30th, and to turn 1 30th into one whole, we just need to multiply it by 30 to have 30 30ths. We multiply the numerator by the same thing, and we get 90 80ths. And this can be simplified to 1 and 10 80ths, and again as 1 and 1 8th gallon, and that's in one minute. So which tank is leaking faster? Well, tank B has more gallons coming out in a minute than tank A does. One and one eighth is greater than three fourths, so tank B is leaking faster. And we can compare mixed numbers by first comparing their whole number parts. If their whole numbers are equal, then we compare their fractional parts using a common denominator. If we need to compare 5 and 1 third to 6 and 1 fifth, well, that's easy. 5 is less than 6, so we know 6 and 1 fifth is greater, the whole number is greater. But if we have 3 and 5 eighths and we need to compare it to 3 and 3 fifths, well, they both have a 3 for a whole number, so let's compare the fractions. First thing we do is find their least common multiple for 8 and 5 to give them the same denominator. Well, that would be 40. When we list the multiples of 8 and the multiples of 5, the one that they have in common that is the least would be a 40. So we give them 40 as a common denominator. And 8 times 5 is 40, so we need to multiply this numerator by 5. We don't want it to get jealous. It wants to be multiplied by the same thing as the denominator. So we have 25 fortieths. For 3 fifths, this 5 needs to be multiplied by 8 to be a 40, so we multiply the 3 times 8, we get 24 fortieths. Well, 25 fortieths is more than 24 fortieths, it's more fortieths. Now we can put the 3's in front of them and write them in their original form. We see that 3 and 5 eighths is greater than 3 and 3 fifths. Units of time usually go in the denominator when a rate is written as a compound fraction. 
if it says she drove 25 miles in half hour, well, that half hour, that time is going to be the denominator of our compound fraction. We're going to write the 25 on top. And to turn one half into one whole, we just need to multiply it by two because that would be a two over a one, wouldn't it? If we were to write this two over one, we would get two halves. That's one whole. We multiply the 25 by two and that's 50. We know she drove 50 miles per hour, 50 miles in one hour. If it says in one third hour it leaked two gallons, well, this is backwards. We've got the time first. So we can flip it around when we rewrite our compound fraction and put two gallons over one third hour. See, the unit of time usually is in the denominator of the compound fraction when we write it as a rate, okay? In order for this one-third to be one whole, we just need to multiply it by three. We'll have three-thirds. That's one whole. We multiply the numerator by the same factor. We get six gallons in one hour. So be really careful. Just remember that units of time usually go in the denominator when a rate is written as a compound fraction. If we know the rate of a water leak in liters per hour, we can find the number of hours it takes for only one liter of water to leak out. We take the reciprocal of the rate. Our rate is four liters per hour. Well, four liters per hour is one hour per four liters. So if this entire bar diagram is one hour, okay, and we have four liters in this one hour, four liters per hour, well, we know one liter is one-fourth hour. The rate of four liters per hour is one-fourth hour per liter. Does that make sense? We're finished with lesson 4.1. We're going to be moving on to 4.2. And 4.2a is discovering proportional relationships. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and I hope you join me for the next lesson. Bye.